Um, I couldn't listen to the live address by the Vice President, but I've taken time to read the 129 page speech he delivered at the said function. And after I did so, I felt sad for this country. And I felt sad, Jifa, because we have a vice president who is very insincere and deceitful. A vice president who is not willing to accept responsibility for his own economic mismanagement and the failings of his government. That 129 page speech is full of blatant falsehood and a litany of excuses that do not hold water. And if we start the substantive discussion, I will be pointing um, those issues to you. The, the lies, the blatant lies, the use of cooked figures to and, and false statistical averages to create an impression that this government has done better when the facts, the true facts rather show that this country um, has had its economic deteriorating in the last five years. I'll be pointing those things out to you. But just to respond quickly to something Prof said about um, the figures by Wumia presented showing that they've done better relative to GDP. You see, Prof, if you have an economy with three oil fields, okay, you cannot be comparing GDP growth of such an economy to an economy that had only one oil field. President Kofo had one oil field, the Jubilee Fields, which he bequeathed to the Mills Mahama administration. And that oil field was giving this country averagely 70,000 barrels of oil per day. Now, due to President Mohammed's investments in that sector, the hydrocarbon sector, by the time we were leaving office in 2016, we had discovered and were ready for commercial um, uh, operationalization of two new additional oil fields, the Ten Sankofa fields, which this government knows next to nothing about. In fact, it was as a result of that that the World Bank, the IMF, and the Economic Intelligence Unit in 2016 predicted a growth rate of 8% for Ghana. In 2016, they predicted that growth rate for 2017, even before elections were held and these people came to office. You understand? And so today, whereas we had just about 70,000 uh, barrels of oil a day, they are now having over 200,000 barrels of oil per day. In terms of oil revenue, we had just about 6 billion Ghana cities in four years. In four years, they've had over 20 billion. I know that is minus that 2021. Mr. Jenfi, I know we are not producing 200,000 barrels of oil per day. We are producing. We are, produ we are producing something uh, in the realm of a bit over 120. It's not no, 200,000. No, no. Our capacity is between 180,000 and 200,000. Yes, you can cross but I know that. But not 120,000. I know that, I know that yeah. the oil wells are not producing that much. I'm, I've worked in that sector, so no, I'm, I know I'm, the figures. You see, we are not talking about outings. We are talking about production capacity. Uh -huh. What was the oil, the, the oil production capacity of yes, Ghana but after 2016? But the challenge is that there is a difference between what the oil field is projected to produce and what is actually being sold. I know that it's not that. So I just want to put that on. Well, if you want us to discuss that, we can discuss that. And you can give us the figures that you know to be correct so that we can debate that. Because it is not true that the oil production capacity of Ghana is 120,000 barrels. Minimum, it is 190,000. And if you check their own budgets, they put it between 180,000 and 200,000. So what I said was a fact. If you want to say that they are producing below capacity, mm -hmm. then you can give us those figures for us to interrogate that. But that's not the argument I'm making. I'm making an argument based on capacity. Okay. When we had a capacity of 70,000 barrels a day, it didn't mean that every day we're producing 70,000 barrels. Are you getting me? So get the context right. And so I'm saying that you cannot compare a, the GDP growth of an economy which has three oil fields with an economy which, has, which had only one oil field. And despite the fact that they have had that huge advantage in terms of oil and the revenue coming in because of oil due to our investments, I will demonstrate to you when we begin these discussions that we perform far better in terms of all the, the, the most important economic matrices 
like budget deficit, like debt to GDP ratio, and so on, than they have done with far more resources. Mm.